What is Tony Kawa, Shikimori, My Dress Up Darling, Galaxy Next Door, or The Angel Next Door all have in common? They have a waifu, and they want to sell you on it. Gyarus, 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 Gyarus are taking over the anime sphere. But it's nothing new. Don't get me wrong. From the sci-fi boom to the mecha craze, to the insane amounts of harem anime to club shows, and then yes, eventually into isekais and beyond. Trends in anime is a big thing. <laughs> it's so funny these days whenever you're watching a season and everybody's complaining about there being too many isekais, they don't really seem to understand that this is a normal thing in anime. Anime has gone through so many iterations of massive amounts of boom in certain genres. Me personally, man, the mecha craze was huge. <laughs> it seems like you could not walk two feet without tripping over a mecha show. But at some point, they sort of got away from it. Like everything else in the world, trends come and go. Even in the West, we had a period of time where everybody was fascinated by space and we had a lot of movies and TV shows centering around space. I mean, Star Trek and Star Wars, all those kind of things. That was about the same time that a lot of sci-fi was hit in Japan as well. We had a fascination with space. But like I said, over time, those trends sort of lose their flavor and a lot of people kind of move on from them. And currently, as I said, we're looking at a large amount of isekais. Now, depending on who you ask, that's a good thing or a bad thing. Some people love their isekais. I personally really like isekais. While other people, yes, are asking, when is this gonna stop? But honestly, I think isekais is stabilizing and it's starting to trend downward. Yes, a lot of that's, it's kind of shifting into reincarnations rather than isekais, but it makes me start to wonder, what's next? What, what trend is in the future? And now when somebody asked me about a year ago, I immediately jumped to Teasing Girl. I thought Teasing Girl was going to be the next big thing. We had things like Nagatoro, we had Uzaki-chan, Duke of Death. All those shows were giving me a sense of, man, I think this is the future. I think this is the new big craze. They were doing really well on the charts. So I assumed this is the next big thing. And as we got later into last year, we had things like when will Ayumu make his move? We had the maid I hired recently was is suspicious. And we had the returning and concluding of Takagi-san. And yes, this year we have Kuba Won't Let Me Be Invisible. We have Nagatoro returning for its second season. We have The Dangers of My Heart coming up next season. We have your experience, I was not, which I'm assuming is going to be a sort of teasing girl. And honestly, I really also thought that Villainous was going to become a thing. It really did feel like for a while there, we were getting one Villainous show per season. A show where somebody gets transported into a visual novel where there's a Villainous and the character is the Villainous. And granted, yes, this year we're, we already have like, I think four already lined up. But at some point late last year, it hit me. I realized really quickly, I think I know what is going to be the next big anime trend. And now I don't know how successful it's gonna be in the West, but let's be perfectly honest, this type of show is probably gonna make it really big in Japan. Yes, the perfect waifu show. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what the hell is a perfect waifu show? Well, let me explain. I would describe this as a show where you have a male protagonist character who is presented with a perfect waifu in a sense. Yes, this can be in the midst of a harem show. You can have multiple characters in it, but the main focus and a lot of the driving force, a lot of the storytelling is sort of centered on this one pairing. And yes, that female character being what is being described as a perfect waifu, a female character that has very few flaws. They might have a, a, a crack in their heart that they need to fix, that the protagonist at some point might fix, but outwardly, for the most part, 99% of the show is how perfect this girl is. They are a girl that you fall in love with. They're attractive. They're typically blonde hair because blonde hair is big in Japan. They go out of their way to fix the main character's issues. They want to nurture the main character, help them with their flaws, pull them out of their shell, show them there's great things in the world, fix their problems. And yes, additionally, for the most part, they seem like willing individuals willing for going further though yes for the most part the main character is not going to take them up on it <laughs> let's be perfectly honest we don't want to go that far because sadly in japan and i plan on making a whole video on this concept sadly in japan they have an idol mentality and your idols can't be deflowered they can't be stained by the main character if they want to sell those figures if they want to sell those body pillows that main character can't touch them now to give some examples of what i think is a perfect waifu type of show you have things like tonikawa over the moon for you girl is legit a perfect waifu she has pretty much no stains she's perfect she's 
everything you'd ever dream of. She has a cute side. She has a bashful side. But those are all to feed into what the viewer wants. I would even say Taisho Tomi Fairy Tale is a really good example. She's kind of a perfect waifu. She's supportive. She's always helping the main character, pulling him out of his darkness. And yes, she has her own issues. She has her insecurities. She has her fears. But in the end, it's all to support the main character. You would want that in your life. My dress up darling. Then right now, especially just in general, the idea of gyaru waifus is huge right now. We are seeing a lot of gyaru type shows. And yes, She's perfect. She's an otaku. Every otaku wants a waifu that's an otaku, especially a gyaru. She's into cosplay. She will fill any of your fantasies. Every otaku out there wants an otaku waifu that cosplays their sexiest characters out there. She's a perfect waifu. And yes, she has a vulnerable side. You want that vulnerable side. Shikimori's not just a cutie. It's an entire show about how cute and cool Shikimori is. More than a married couple, but not just lovers. It's a gyaru, once again, She's super sexy. She has this other side to her, the hidden vulnerable side to her. You fall in love with it. And as I said, there seems to be an upward trend. I'm seeing an upward trend in these styles of shows. As we get in 2023, we already have Angel Next Door. Gosh, girl can cook, clean. She does everything for the main character. She never wants. Seems like a perfect waifu. She's the most popular kid in school. Ice Guy and my cool female colleague. Gosh, I love her to death. <laughs> She's so gorgeous. She's caring. She's constantly asking what she can do to help the main character. Every time she sees he has an issue, she wants to be there. She's supportive. Yes, we're having Tonakawa come back. Galaxy Next Door is next season. That's basically a guy whose his life is falling apart. He has no money and he's trying to take care of his younger siblings. And then the most beautiful woman comes out of nowhere and saves him. And she's gorgeous. And she's wed to him already. And then coming up here soon, we have small senior in my company. And that's name a few. Starting from 2021, what I would classify as a perfect waifu show, a show that most of its focus is on how gorgeous this character is. In 2021, we only had about four of them. In 2022, we had 12. And already, already, we're not even halfway through this year. In 2023, we already have 13. This is a massively growing trend. Compared to everything else, like we have Mecha has gone downhill. 2021, 13, down to seven, down to four of this year so far. Thrillers has come down from 10 in 2021 to three this year so far, three last year. Horror was only five in 2021 and 2022. Teasing Girl, which sometimes plays into the perfect waifu, has seen an uptick, but only from four to six this year. Perfect waifus though, has been consistently growing. And yes, even Isekai had a huge drop last year. 2021, we had 24. 2022, we had 19, but I will say that this year we already have 22 of them. So we are seeing an uptick in these guys, but nothing percentage wise as perfect waifus. And so I think that's going to be a new growing trend. Now the question mark does come up, why? Why are we seeing an uptick in this perfect waifu type of storytelling? Yes, there's a lot of people that will get into some crazy conspiracy theories that the government is trying to push these types of shows because they're trying to fix the low birth rates in Japan, which is an issue. Let's be perfectly honest, it's an issue everywhere. Nobody's having kids anymore in the entire world. Well, in most areas, at least most first world countries. But that aside, I don't necessarily think that's the case. These companies are producing what they want to produce to make money. A1 Pictures is not working with the government to make more waifu shows. They're making what sells. Waifus sell figures, art, body pillows, music albums, source material like crazy. It is something that's growing. And yes, you can argue that part of that growth is because of that lack of romance happening in Japan. And yes, people are replacing actual romance with books, with anime. It's a lot of people that just don't have the time to even get out to meet somebody. They're stuck in a capsule hotel before they go back to work or they're on break from work and they just wanna read about that perfect waifu. It's an escapism to find that perfect self. And yes, there's a whole discussion that can come out of the, the effects and the negative effects that comes from that and the idea that it creates this, this perfect image that you want and you can't find in the real world, but it's still a trend. And for a lot of people that can disconnect themselves from the fantasy, it's not a bad thing. I personally don't find it a bad thing. When I leave away from my anime and I go out to find somebody, I'm not gonna be looking for the angel next door who spoils me rotten. 
It's not going to find it. But you could probably say some people don't have that disconnection. Let's be perfectly honest. And it's so funny that I can accept that this is a trend that's coming, despite the fact that it's a trend that I personally don't find appealing. I don't typically like the perfect waifu shows. The Angel Next Door, Tony Kawa. Those are shows that I don't find appealing. They're a bit too much. They're too perfect and they're boring. I like characters that have a lot of flaws and get into those flaws. And while yes, a lot of these perfect waifu shows will have flaws in the characters, they're not enough to overwhelm the show because again, the focus, the 99% of the focus is how perfect that character is. It's when you look over and you see Kubo and she won't let you be invisible and she smiles. That's what's important. That smile, not what Kubo is struggling with. And again, that's why I'm not too happy about this trend. But who knows, I might find that one that really does hit me and I'll be fully accepting it because I have found success in it. Taisho Tomi Fairy Tale was fantastic and my dress up darling is amazing and I cannot wait for second season. But let me know down in the comments down below. Do you think this is a logical trend or do you see some other trend that's coming up? I would love to hear from you guys. I'd actually like to make this maybe a twice a year type of video to really keep an eye on where the trends are going and see where we're kind of shifting to because I think every single season you'll see a shift and sometimes that big new trend will sneak up on you. But like I said, let me know down in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down below. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button so you got my content, ID news, reviews, first impressions, top list of its animates pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, I greatly appreciate it if you consider supporting us on Patreon, the tips link, or the super thanks button down below. We also have a membership button where you become a member of the channel. I greatly, greatly appreciate everybody that supports the channel and y'all take care.